It's the one okay, where there, yes. there, there's a little thing flying and it's just going, it's defying gravity. Could it be some aerial technology that they're testing? The best counter explanation I heard, I heard of that was, well, think about this. What if those pilots had crashed trying to track this or had fired upon it or something like that? So we've recovered a craft uh, from Roswell or from maybe something else. Or maybe we've recovered multiple crap. Repeatedly referring to an off-world vehicle. That's the term they used that was in their possession. And we've been able to replicate it. Well, our competitors in the government around the world would be very interested in trying to either yeah, get a hold sure. of that vehicle or harness the same technology we have. We have a very special guest today. I'm joined by Alicia Taylor of the Cherry Bombs, and she has an awesome experience that you cannot miss. You have to tune in at a very certain time or you're going to miss out on it. And we have an exclusive clip that we're going to show you here as well uh, that is going to blow your mind the production value. Now, I've seen a lot of band live streams. I've seen a lot of creative live streams that have happened out there but I have not seen anything like this. This is insane. So I want to talk to you about this feat that you've pulled off. Thank you so much for joining me today. Explain this to me. Macabre is what it's called. Yeah. Thank you for having me too, by the way. Just of course. Like coming on and talking to you and you yeah, know, so great. Um, yeah. Macabre is really the show that the Cherry Bones was supposed to tour with last spring. COVID hit, everything got postponed or canceled. Right. Um, this was going to be our first headlining run. So I had actually written this show, the storyline for the show a few years ago, and I was putting it all together. We were getting ready to go out on the road with it. And then this hit and we had to kind of shift gears and adapt to this new way of life that we're all in right now. And the, the original idea was you know, because I didn't really know how long everybody was going to be off the road for or how long we we're going to have to wait to perform live shows. The original idea was to do like an extended trailer version of this show, if you will, to kind of get people excited for when we do hit the road, they'll have an idea of what to expect, yada, yada, yada. And then time kind of went on and live shows weren't happening. And we were all like, okay, I guess this is it. So then I shifted gears again and I turned to Nathan, um, whose company is Kind Punk, who does all my filming, I said, we gotta have, we're gonna have to make this a virtual show. Like it's gonna have to be a proper full length virtual show. He said, okay, let's do it. So we started filming in August and uh, we kind of toyed around with the way we were gonna put it on because we've seen virtual shows, right? Like they're on stage, right. they're in concerts. And some bands have gotten a little more creative too in that regard. Like I've seen some really cool ones, Behemoth did a really rad one. Um, and I kind of wanted to do something a little different too. So I thought, okay, well, let's shoot everything in its own environment in the storyline as right. almost a movie itself. So we just started hammering away at it. And in going through all of that, we built what is now Macabre. Welcome, welcome. Oh, don't be afraid, my lovies. Hurry now. We won't wait forever, you know. Tick tock, tick tock. Time is a-wasting. Yes, hurry up. Ah, there it is. Hmm. Now, let me tell you a story about my very best friend. <laughs> I'm sure you've all met her at some point in your life. To some, she's glorious, captivating, beautiful, just absolutely splendid. <laughs> to others, She's vile, unforgiving, and woefully villainous. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the White Dog Saloon. <laughs> and it's almost, in my opinion, from what I've seen of it, it's almost like a movie in and of itself. So like you said, there are some folks out there who get a little bit more creative and they do a little bit more. But I haven't seen anything like this. These are full scenes, full scale location shoots in various places. And as I understand it, so th this is what, correct me if I'm wrong here. So it's going to come out on January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. 
And on those days, there will be two pieces to the story that come out at noon and six Pacific time. So if you do not tune in during those times, you could miss out on the next piece of the story. And right uh no the full the full show will be shown at noon and then another full show is shown at six right okay so i so, so you won't miss yeah okay so you actually have more opportunities for people yes. to see it you okay. have six opportunities to see it and we did that to space out the timing for people on the east coast people in europe right. people in australia so nobody was you know waking up at four in the morning to watch this thing we wanted to give everybody a chance to catch it right So you can catch it on January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, noon and 6th Pacific, like a movie theater having different showings. Right. Okay. Got it. Got it. Guys, I'm dumb. So you got to bear with me out here, folks. (laughs) So, so you, you're, you guys are making this stuff and you're going in through this whole process. You and Corey have both been busy. He had his live stream, his solo project, which was insane. And there was that giant production value. And then he's working on that. And then you're working on a daggone movie this whole time. You know, how many hours of the day were you doing this? How long did it take? Well, our our project is a little different in that we kind of filmed it in chunks. Right. Um, like I said, we started filming in August. Uh, I think Nathan has flown to Vegas more times than he would ever like to. Poor guy. <laughs> I'm, I joke. I'm like, I need a room here in the house for him. Right. Um, but we, if we weren't filming the cherry bombs, we were rehearsing for the next chunk to film. So we were just go, 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 go. Um, filming some days were, you know, 12, 13 hours, you know, some days were like five. So we definitely took it in sections. And I think that was really good for the, for the girls because it didn't burn them out. It was good for Nathan, didn't burn him out too much. He could go home, recharge, and then we could start editing right away in between and get ready for the next section. So we kind of were putting the bones together as we went along. And I really like that formula. It worked really well for us. Um, but yeah, meanwhile, Corey's doing his thing. So, you know, after he got done with his live stream and his album release, yeah, he was doing a ton of press leading up to that. And right. so he was like the super, super busy one. And then I got super, super busy. So we, we kind of do this balancing thing between the two of us where you know, I kind of take over responsibilities around the house when he's working super hard and on a lot of things. And then we, we switch vice versa. So when I'm filming and I'm not able to be home a whole lot, you know, he's got, he's got the house on lock, he's figuring it out. And so we, we work really well as a team that way. Thank God. Is he like a, is he a handyman or anything though? Like, does he, is he able to fix things? Cause I'm not Handyman, no, he leaves that to me. <laughs> yeah, he calls me Barb Vila, right? So I'm I'm the one building things, fixing things. Like I've got the tools. And right. um, but he loves, I tell you, man, this guy loves to mop and sweep. He will mop and sweep all day, every week. Like I'm like, okay, baby, you just take that and you run, you run with it, live. So he <laughs> You posted yeah. like um, you posted the other day. You were talking about like something like "Hell hath no fury on a woman who's like vacuuming or sweeping." Does that go for <laughs> men too? Does he like aggressively sweep or anything? No, I think for him, it's, <laughs> it's got to be almost therapeutic because he'll put his headphones on, and I can always tell where he's at in the house because I'll be working on the computer and I'll just hear him start singing, you know, in the far <laughs> corner of the house, just rocking out, just right. to the weirdest music and. You know, he's all over the place with that. So, right. Um, yeah, he just rocks out and sweeps and he's like, doo, 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 woo, woo. And he's just, all right, well, cool. Well, so Macabre, by the way, for those of you who are very interested in this, I would strongly encourage you to visit the link in the description and the top comment because you can place your order there. You can get set up with the Macabre stream. Um, I'm going to be watching. Everybody's going to be there. And there's probably going to be some surprises too, I would have to imagine, knowing how elaborate this whole thing is. Yeah, there's some Easter eggs in there, man. Um, The one cool thing we thought about with our website, it's called whitedogsaloon.com. We set that one up. Um, So there's some vignettes there on video that you have to go through and play. And there's some subliminal codes in those videos. So if you can find them, it actually is a discount code that you will enter on checkout for a discount on your ticket. So I love um, how creative this is. Yeah, it goes deep, man. It was fun. Um, it's all based around uh, when I lived in Hawaii. Uh, I lived on a road called Old Poly Road, 
And when I first moved there, I had no idea of anything. And all the friends that I made there that were locals were like, oh, whoa, you live on Old Poly Road. You know, that's, that's haunted. And I was like, oh, no way. So they started telling me all these stories. And I based Macabre on the, the story of the goddess Pele um, that I would hear out there in Hawaii. So uh, she appears as a hitchhiker on the side of the road sometimes, either in the form of a beautiful young woman or an old lady. And you're supposed to pull over for her. And if you pull over for oh, her- Oh, hell no. Nah. She gets in the back of your car and you drive off and she eventually disappears. If you don't Absolutely pull over not. for her- if you don't, though, if you don't, you're going to break down or crash your car. And it, it's really about, you know, helping other people, <sighs> you know, extending yourself and and just looking out for one another. Right. So mm-hmm. that's the lesson there. And I took um, that story and expanded on it. Yeah. OK, so I'm not letting this lady I'm not letting anybody <laughs> that I don't know get in my damn car. And if my car breaks down, I'll be very surprised because it's a Tesla and it's battery powered. <laughs> so she's going to have to be like a hacker or something. <laughs> Yeah, And I don't play with this haunted stuff. I don't play. I was just deep diving with a a friend of mine and we were talking about like aliens and UFOs and stuff. And I was like, see, I would never put myself in a, in a situation like this. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the first person to run. If I even have a hint of, of fear, I'm not, (laughs) I hope that you're not the type who says, Oh yeah, get in. (laughs) Yeah. I'm out of here. You know? Yeah. Or, or. And I'm I'm just I'm not being rude about this to people, but I might yeah. have to human shield somebody. You know, look if if <laughs> if it comes down to it, ah! <laughs> man, we did the saw escape room the other day. Okay, yeah. it was it was Griff, Corey, myself, um, our friend Lady, and Griff's bandmate Cole. And hey, if you ever get the chance to come to Vegas, you've got to go to this thing. It was so cool. It's immersive. It's interactive active and it's not like an escape room where you're stuck in one room for an hour you go through multiple rooms and they're all wow. true to the, to the saw story right and there were some surprises things jump out at you things like go off it it's great and i was screaming bloody right the same thing i ran <laughs> and i hid behind griff and i was like oh. <laughs> right <laughs> they just the i was worthless in there so I've seen um, there are these haunted houses and stuff. I, I've always wanted to go there, but at the same time, I I haven't. But they have haunted houses around the country where you have to sign a waiver. And in the waiver, it's basically, yeah, we can beat you up. We can hit you. We can put you in a chair and lock you down. And it's like extreme horror. And it sounds yes. kind of like that to a certain extent. Um, but, you know, that's another thing. I, I've tried the escape rooms. And here's the problem. And I, I saw your post. You said that you guys like solved you know, a higher percentage than most people normally solve. So for me, I have a a problem with these sort of uh, rooms because I'm dumb. So I'm not actually able to figure out any of the things. There's a lot like I went to one of these escape rooms one time and it was like, solve the clue. And I'm like, like, (laughs) I don't know how, you know, I'm I'm, (laughs) I'm dumb. I'm stupid. So uh, it was just basically me paying like $37 to stand in a room for an hour and then they they then like the staff is like okay we're gonna give you just one more hint. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's somewhere yeah. over here, yeah. over in this, this in thing, this, in this drawer maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they want you to do like math, and they want you to solve stuff, and it's like you know I read at a third grade level. Uh, I, I can barely count uh, past a hundred. So, you know, you're asking me to do math and stuff like that. I can't do it. So, yeah, and then you add the pressure, okay, on top of that. You add the anxiety that's running through you when you look at a clock right. and you see the clock ticking and then you're like, okay, a lot of the problems were, you know, you have to count how many letters or the numbers to the letter in the alphabet. So you're like, A, B, C, G, D, fuck. Okay, A, B, G. <laughs> you're like, it was like, I don't know what's happening. I just see the clock again. I forgot what the alphabet is. Yeah, it's you got to have somebody with you that has watched a lot of true crime stuff and seen right. all that, and they're they're good. We had that. That was Lady in our group. Right. She was like, "All right, we're in it. I know this. We're good." And I was like, "Okay." You guys aren't into true crime stuff. We are. Uh, we are, but not like Lady. She she right. listens to every podcast, like right every documentary. That's out so there. interesting because. Uh, self-promotion here but uh, i've been for the last few months 
Um, I've been banking content. I've been making mini documentaries on true crime stuff and I'm launching really? a true crime channel next year. Um, cause next I have, year. <sighs> yeah, I have rock feed. I have country cast, which has almost right. 200,000 subscribers. Uh, this right. one has almost 600 and then I'm doing, uh, it's called, it's going to be called missing and mysteries and it's mm. going to go into like, I'm going to put on like a tinfoil hat and just be like, are aliens real? And we're going to okay. get to the bottom of it. Uh, and, and find out. So, um, you know, if you guys are into that, I'll send you over some of the stuff. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you guys won't laugh at me. Stuff. <laughs> Man, I, I'm trying to think of her name, but she's an investigative journalist and she has a really cool book on stuff like that. So she did one right. on, um, area 51 and all the UFO stuff. And then she did another one on assassins like around the world. Right. Um, have, do you know who I'm talking about? I, I do not. Yeah, I'll look her up. I'll send it to you. But it, that stuff was just so fascinating. And it was so cool. And she interviewed all these people that, you know, this man on his deathbed that worked at Area 51. And he finally right. told her some like super secret stuff. So there's yeah. there's a lot of like there's stuff like Bob Lazar or um, yes. what's his face from Blink-182, uh, Tom DeLonge, <laughs> who who, you know, people used to make fun of that guy. And then it comes out that he's legit. A lot of the things that he said were found to be true because he hired a man by the name of Louis Elizondo. And Louis Elizondo was one of the highest figures who worked for the government on their CIA program. There's retired elected officials who acknowledge that. So uh, and he was talking about the, the have you seen the infamous Tic Tac video? The video yeah. where it's the it, there's a fighter jet. This was this was acknowledged by the Navy. So there's these pilot, there's these guys in jets. Wait. Is it the one that was acknowledged recently? Yes, it's the one okay, where there, yes. there, there's a little thing flying and it's just going, yes. it's defying gravity. And they say, yes, this really yes, did happen. It was a UFO. And, and yeah, so it's a UFO. And, the, and could it be some aerial technology that they're testing? The best counter explanation I heard, I heard of that was, well, think about this. Why would the government be scaring their own personnel testing a project? What if those pilots had crashed trying to track this or had fired upon it or something like that? So it's not, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense that our own government, of course, anything's possible, but it's, it, to me, it lends some credibility to the fact that maybe there could be some UFOs involved. So, uh, and, and I don't want to end up on a watch list or anything. So, uh, I feel, I don't want to go too much into this. When do you think they're going to, they're going to own up to it and tell the public everything they know? Um, I think that there, from what I've been told, um, is that I think there are some competing factions in the government who have varying interests on why it shouldn't be released. For one, there have been spec there's been speculation that there we've recovered a craft uh from Roswell or from maybe something else. Right. Or maybe we've recovered multiple craft. And this is not me saying like, oh, I heard we got a craft. <laughs> the New York Times did this big expose where they had leaked internal testimony in the Pentagon where one of the guys was repeatedly referring to an off-world vehicle. That's the term they used that was in their possession. So um, basically, the theory is, is that if we're known to be in possession of a vehicle that can do things that nothing on this earth can do, and we've been able to replicate it, well, our competitors in the government around the world would be very interested in trying to either yeah, get a hold sure. of that vehicle or harness the same technology we have because our, our, the, the way the world works is it's like respecting the power. So if we've got the ultimate like FU card, well, we got cars that can do or vehicles that can do this, that, and the third, and you can't beat us in war because we found this from the aliens. Yeah. Well, China or Russia or somebody's going to want to come over and beat our ass uh, and try to get it or try to infiltrate that program. That's my like psychopath, like <laughs> conspiracy theory about it. Uh, I mean, and it I don't, and I, when I, I don't mean it in a in a negative way either. I'm not disparaging anyone who looks into this kind of stuff. I say conspiracy theory because it's a theory that there's a conspiracy that, not to release this. Right. As yet so, to be proven. Right. So I'm curious uh, what you guys are doing for Christmas. What what did you get, Corey? You can tell us and we will not tell him. Um, tell just you. Just so you know. Yeah. You know, we kept everything really low key this year. Um, you know, as you know, we just had his birthday. Both he and I have birthdays on the other side of Christmas. So it's, it gets a little tough. It, we just knock them all out at the same time, it seems like. Right. Um, so 
for Christmas, we're just going to keep it to us and the kids and, and my parents and that's it. Um, right. my parents live here. So, um, that's great. Super small. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, and I got him, you know, it, what do you get the man that has everything? Right. right. So I actually got him a battery daddy. <laughs> Just, what is that? You know what I'm talking about? It's a, it, I, I love going on to as seen on TV and getting him these like really <laughs> cheesy, terrible gifts. Yeah. And so this year I found the battery daddy. Because when we first got together, we went to the store, one of the first times we went to the store together, and he bought like a ton of batteries. He's this guy that just has to have, <laughs> you know, triple A, double A. What's he pow- you know, What's he powering? That's what I want to know. I was like, what are you getting ready for? Right. And he just has to have a ton of batteries in the drawer at all times. So I just thought that was the weirdest thing. But, and then I, I saw that I was looking for like terrible gifts to give as a joke. And uh, right. I found the battery daddy. That's basically a giant battery case that you can feed all your batteries into and it organizes them and keeps them <laughs> in one solid thing. So a battery daddy. What a, what a great name, right? Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> totally one of those like infomercial type things, you know? Right. Um, so I asked Twitter about it too, and they were throwing out some really good suggestions. Like I should give them like, a, like a Slipknot t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. Yeah. yeah. Get, here you go. This is yeah. from the merch warehouse. Right. No, yeah. <laughs> but I got him some cool stuff too. You know, like um, he likes some rings. And so I found this really cool ring um, right. that I think he'll really like and some clothes and, you know, that kind of stuff. So Fitbit, he, he's got to have his Fitbit and his broke. So got him right. going. He, so yeah. he's um he's into like meeting the step counts and all that stuff. I'm I'm kind of oh. into that too. You, I'm not into as into it as him. You can just look at me and tell that. So, um, I'm, I'm like a half-assed sort of stepper. If I get it, hey, I get it. If I don't, I don't. You're, you're doing it. You get along. You just gotta get, get out there. I lost. And get, it's no, you lost a bunch of weight, didn't you? I did, but then I gained yeah. it back. So he, I'm ba- I just started my diet back on Monday. And this is not a beer I'm drinking. This is liquid death. Water. Uh, yes, it's delicious. But, um, I, um, so what happened is obviously, you know, uh, not, not to bring the mood down, <laughs> but but my dad got sick. Uh, obviously, he passed away recently. Everybody knows this, so I'm not going to go through the whole story again. But uh, he passed away, whatever. It was peaceful, and, and I, I got to spend every day with him. So in the course of spending every day with my dad, like I was there seven days a week, and we would, like my dad, he knew that he had like progressive cancer. So it's like, well, what do you do? So it's okay, well then let's just fucking ride this thing out, baby. And so me and my dad were drinking beers and drinking whiskey every night. And so I was telling my, I have a nutritionist and she's the one who helped me lose all this weight. And I'm like, listen, if my dad says, hey, want to drink a beer? I'm not gonna say, sorry, dad, I'm trying to lose some weight. You know, like too bad. Sit over there by yourself and drink, you know? No. So she, she had a great comeback to this. She said, well, listen, I agree with you and I understand, but when he offers you a beer, just drink that one. Don't go and drink 12 other ones. Those are your creation, right? Yeah. Okay. And I was like, I was like, damn, okay. Cause I was like, see, I got her on this one. Cause I'm gonna bring up my dad and she can't right. say anything. Cause it's a good excuse and, and it's legit. But you know, now I'm getting back on the wagon. Cause I have to, you know, I, I, I joke about being fat and stuff, but I can't, I mean, I'm, I know I'm not like this morbidly obese person, but I do want to be healthy and I do care about it. Um, I love drinking. I'm not a drunk. I, I like drinking for taste. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've been sticking to like 70 calorie white claws, shout out yeah. to white claw. Um, I love your white claw or vodka, um, or like quadruple purified vodka. That's the challenge. And I got to stay away from that, um, you know, like DoorDash. DoorDash should be illegal. It should be banned. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Stick to the, <laughs> you know, low sugar stuff. Um, you know, like you said, the vodka, vodka water, vodka uh, tonics, that kind right. of stuff. It's not as like delicious, but it's, right. you know. It's, it's are you guys you. conscious about your diet? Or are you guys like the evil monsters who just have good metabolism and cheated at life? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, in fact, um, we we have a treadmill in the in the garage and, and we hit it and we uh, run. I lift a lot. Um, 
So uh, Corey is actually, he's back on the wagon now. So he had his birthday and, you know, we, we went plant-based like a while ago. So we, right. we don't eat chicken or meat or anything like that. But he said for my birthday, he's like, look, I don't, I just want Popeye's. So <laughs> I was like, okay. And then he was like, and I don't want to like pig out on sweets because sugar is kind of his kryptonite. Right. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll get you know, these vegan cupcakes from the bakery. And that way you can just have one cupcake and that's your portion control and you're good. He's like, okay, cool. So I go get his Popeyes and I get cupcakes. And what we didn't know was that his management had sent a giant package of, have you ever heard of um, Milk Bar Bakery? Milk Bar? Maybe, okay, but so I'm not like into this... like sweets and stuff, so. Are you more savory? I'm, I'm more of like, if you can fry it and put cheese on it, yeah, you're savory. That's yeah. what I want. Same, me too. Well, of course, <laughs> sweet. So, the, uh, this baker, she, what she does is she takes cereal, like Frosted Flake cereal, I think, I think it is, and she melts it down and then uses that and puts that in the batter. So, like all that sugar oh, and stuff. Yeah, good. and it's amazing. Milk Bar Bakery. So they sent a cake, a tin of cookies, a pie, so cake bites you know little mini cake bites two of those so we were like oh my god this is a lot <laughs> then his guitar player zach came over to wish him happy birthday and brought over have you ever heard of um is it carvel ice cream cakes now i do like ice cream cakes but i haven't heard of that There's, but i will this is eat an, an east ice coast thing cake. apparently yes there, so somebody in the comments will say something i'm sure carvel yeah. <laughs> ice cream cake, a whole sheet cake. Okay. So now we've got cupcakes, another cake, you know, cookies, a pie, cookie or cake bites and a whole nother sheet cake. And Corey was just like, Oh my, and Popeye's and Corey was like, Oh my God. And I was just looking at him like, I don't know what tonight's going to what's going to happen tonight or tomorrow morning with you, but we're going to find out. So he's just <laughs> going to town because he's in heaven. And then he wakes up the next morning. He's like, I'm never doing that again. That was awful. <laughs> awful. Right. You uh, can get like a sugar hangover. Ruined. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, so he's like, all right, that's it. We're getting back on the horse. We're going to do good. Okay. So then a week later, lady, my previous friend who was the escape room with us, brings over right. a giant box of donuts. She's not your friend. Wait, she's your previous friend. She's not your friend anymore after this escape oh, yeah, she's, room? She's our friend. Yeah. No, she actually, escaped first. I hate her. Escape first. She's, <laughs> yeah. No, our friend from the escape room um, that we took with us. Our, she's actually known Corey for over 20 years, so they're very, right. very close. Um, she brings over a whole box of donuts, and Corey's like, ah! you're trying to sabotage my diet. Like, ah. <laughs> and then Zach brought over another Culver cake. Carvel, wow. another Carvel ice cream cake. So Corey's like, I can't. So he put the word, I have no more treats, no more goodies. Stop it. I need to get <laughs> healthy again. Like I can't. So right. we made a we made a promise. No more bullshit. Back on the horse. It's time. Right. Yep. So yeah. I'm there too. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I've had. I had a Subway sandwich the other day, which Subway is supposedly fresh, but it's not good. So I'm sort of paying the price for that. The one thing I haven't done is I haven't um, sort of gotten in like shape or like I haven't, I don't, I mean, I'm trying to get in shape, but like I haven't ran or anything. I have a gym right. in my house and I have like the elliptical machine. I have free weights and all this stuff. And I'm like, I have adult ADHD, but it works for me in a good way where if I'm interested in what I'm doing, I can just sit here and work on videos for freaking right. 16 hours a day and I love it. And so I, I am like, I'm not good with the small details. So I'll be like, oh, I don't want to put on jeans. It takes too long. Yeah. And then when I come back, I'd rather just wear basketball shorts everywhere because it's efficient and yeah. I want to get back to doing what okay. I want. Right. So, um, so when it comes to, gym? sorry, do you use your gym at home? That's the problem is that I, it's like, I, I can do a 15 minute high impact cardio workout, but then I get mad, like, or it's like a subconscious resistance in my brain. I'll be like, if I go in there, then it'll take me 15 minutes to work out, to do my speed run. It's like a full sprint for 15 minutes. And then I'll get really sweaty. It's like a pool of sweat when I do it. 
and then I'm going to be muggy and groggy and then I won't get my videos done for the day because I'll have to take a shower and then I'll get too comfortable uh, and I just you. make up excuses. So you're, you're already planning it out and how right. much time it's going to take up when you could get like, to it takes up productive too much things time. for work. Yeah, right. I'm very selfish with my time when it comes to like self-care and so um i have like this is what my day looks like i wake up in the morning or sometimes in the afternoon because I, I stay up late um wow. and then i'll go and i will just start working and i don't mean like i love what i do i love this uh and so i'll start either answering emails or planning or whatever and then figuring out what i'm gonna film for the day and stuff and this is for multiple channels um and then i will uh, either send it out to my guy, Randy, who works on uh, the country stuff, or I'll do it sometimes. And then I'll, you know, do content. And there's a little procrastination in between here and there. I might go and grab a coffee or something and then I'll get back. And then at like nine or 10 PM, I'm done. And then I will like play call of duty for like two hours. And then it's like, I, I like attack the day. I try to get as I try to cram as much into the day as I can. And, um, I don't know. Right. It works for me because if I, I don't, if I don't, I'll be anxious. Do you ever sit around and like just sit there and it just, it's depressing in my opinion. Yeah. If I'm not going a million miles a minute, I'm not happy. If I'm not right. actively progressing on something, I'm not happy. I get, right. I get depressed. I get snippy. I don't, I'm not very fun to be around. So I get it. I, I what I found for me in working out is that I have to do it before the day starts that way it's mm. done it's over with it's i because if i have to i'm like you if i'm too efficient at something or if i'm if i'm throwing myself too much into a project there's no way you're going to get me to stop doing what i'm doing right. go work out and then come back to it because then you're in a different mindset you know right. and if you're hyper focused on what it is that you're doing why would you stop you you, get, you know you get your rhythm you're on a roll yeah and you're just going away i mean there's no way so uh, my trainer gets on me sometimes because um, you know, she and I will have sessions in the middle after I'm like, man, I just can't come in and do that. I gotta, I gotta come in and see you first thing in the morning right. and then, you know, get all crazy shower and then be fresh and then go because you can't right. do it at the end of the day either. You're too tired. Right. And so you're just beaten down by everything that's thrown at you during mm -hmm. the course of a day. And I, I just think that, you know, there's no excuse for it for me. I just sort of, um, those are my mental barriers that I put up and, I just have to figure out a way to put them out. What, you know, I've thought about even getting like one of those, because this is a lifting desk. I can actually uh, like just elevate. Oh, there I go. Oh, Help oh, me. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So um, this is one of those yeah. lifting desks. So I can stand up and maybe I'll put a little treadmill under here or something yeah. or a little, and just be little running bike. in my videos. Right. <laughs> so um, I was thinking about something um, a couple of uh, a few weeks ago. Cause you know, I'll text you periodically. You'll text me, send you something funny yeah. or something, whatever. Yeah. Uh, everyone always has texts going with people they know and all this crap. And, um, I used to send you slipknot memes and stuff like, um, <laughs> like stuff. And then I thought about this. I think you posted something about it or maybe it was something different. And I thought about it. I was like, you're married to one of the most memed guys in the music industry. Like it's, it's just cause he's this great character. It's, he wears a mask and he's just yeah. great for memes. Um, and so I thought about, I wonder how many people load you guys up with shit. That's funny about Corey on the internet, like memes. How many times oh. a day do you get sent that stuff that oh you've already my seen? God. Yeah. No. <laughs> it, like, okay. When a meme comes out, <laughs> I get it from all and people text it to me, people message it to me, people tag me, people DM me, uh, like tweet me it. And it's like, have you seen this? And I'm like, okay, look, dude, this thing went viral. There is no way you're possibly the only person to send right. this to me. Like, right. yes, I've seen it. Yes, I've seen you looking through the glass and you know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, and so the latest one, the latest one is, you know, the, the older gentleman singing snuff, right. you know, they're have you seen this? Ah, you have to see this. You have to, yes, we've seen it. Yes. Corey's seen it. Um, what did so, you guys think of it? Oh man, it's beautiful. Right. Absolutely beautiful. Painful. Just, right. Oh, and it was, it, a lot of people say this too. It was very Johnny Cash hurt. Yep. Um, um, which a lot of people don't realize that he did not write that song. Do you know that? Right. Yeah. You're, really, you're yeah. talking about her. You're talking. Oh, wait, Corey didn't write snuff. No, 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 no. Corey did, but I'm talking about. Oh, her. 
I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, Nine Inch Nails, right? Nine Inch yeah. Nails, yeah, absolutely. But a lot of people think Johnny Cash did, so I was, right. I always think that's really. And I think funny. like the Nine Inch Nails, like what if Trent Reznor came out and was like. Johnny, you should you ruin my song. Like, what can you do? Like, you can't, you're not gonna bash Johnny Cash when he was around and he did it. Like, if the man wants to cover your song, like you let the man cover you let the man cover your song. It's yeah. kind of like um Jason Isbell. Uh, you know, he has this song, Cover Me Up, beautiful song. He's one of the greatest living songwriters. And then Morgan Wallen, in my opinion, is one of the greatest country singers out. Um, he covered this song, Cover Me Up. And so Jason Nilsbell is like this folk guy and folk fans sometimes can be kind of like, Hmm, this country guy is doing your song. It's not smart enough. It's not good enough for me mm-hmm. sipping my coffee, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, least. well, Jason Nilsbell, I mean, Morgan Wallen does this cover and he knocks it out of the park and all the fans cool. are tweeting Jisbell like, can you believe this? And Isbell's like, "Whoa, Morgan, you did an awesome job. Don't I don't know why my fans are like freaking out about this. A cover is a cover. He's not stealing my song. No. He did a beautiful rendition. It got like 15 million views or something on yeah. um on YouTube. So I think if someone covers it, so that's what I was thinking. I hope you and Corey aren't furious at this old man who uh cover <laughs> Damn you. Yeah, yeah. No, he's stealing he, our I he's think, stealing our song. I mean, I can't speak for Corey, but right. I, in in my opinion, I think that when someone does a cover, it's, it, it's, it's flattering. You would think it would be flattering. Like it's this person who loves your song so much that, you know, they want to perform it or they want to see it or they put their own twist on it. It's inspiring right. to them. And, or maybe it pushed them or challenged them to do, you know, something outside of their comfort zone. And I don't know, I would think, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a musician, so I can't speak for them either. But I think if I were that I would feel really, you know, kind of honored that someone even if it was a terrible cover i'd be like oh right, right. that's cool like thanks. what if like, like a really bad. bad person covered one of your songs and it was like i don't like think it matters say- <laughs> no because you know what i can kind of relate in that you sure. know i've had people reach out and be like can we do a cherry bombs like group like right you know that's 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 essentially a cover band of cherry bombs right. so it's the cherry bombs but in a different country right and it's called cherry bombs or whatever oh that's and weird I, yeah but it's like and they would be like the girls like the individual right. girls so i just i thought that was the sweetest thing i thought it was I mean, are they gonna pay and, you no probably not and i wouldn't i mean <laughs> get it get it right. girls you know do that because because if that you know helps someone find their own thing or it right. pushes them to do something that they've always wanted to do, then cool, go for I it. I just man. think in like, in a in a in a way though, like a cover is one thing because it's like yeah. here's you know Jimmy Smith covering Corey Taylor song and everyone knows Corey did it. It would be different than like me saying, "Hey, Corey, is it okay if I start my own Slipknot?" And then he might say, okay, yeah, sure. Well, what if like I started like filling like- Oh, you mean like for money? Okay, that's different. What if the cherry bombs like they they blew up? (laughs) Right, no, like I, no, for money, that's an entirely different story. If somebody's making money off of something, that's a different- You should get paid. You should because- For sure, yeah, absolutely. You invented this thing. But I mean, if it's something that they're just doing for fun and, you know, they're not making any revenue on it and- then right. whatever you know and, and yeah so but yes if it was like an actual proper proper touring cover band you know you, some of you see some of these cover bands they're, they're in like really nice buses and like right you know some of these like kiss ones man they're like right. they're like yeah getting money and hey did you see um i've talked to these guys a couple of times speaking of cover bands um this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, and Corey did this a few months back and oh my God, it was hilarious. Um, this cover band of the sick, they're like this, they're real serious about their, this cover band. They're like, we're going to do this. And they posted on Craigslist and the ad was like, you must be five foot 10 and you must weigh between 152 pounds and 175. And then Corey shared it and was like, I'm going to try out. Did you see, did you see that man? Were you aware of that? Yes, we saw that. And that was, I mean, 
I love it. I think it's great. I mean, right. Corey, Corey's always taking the piss out of shit. So right. he's, I love that about him. He just has the best <laughs> sense of humor in the world. I mean, just so freaking witty and stuff. So yeah, man, I think it, I wish he would have gone. I mean, if we weren't a pan, because it was recent, yeah. right? That was like the past right. year. It was over the summer. Yeah, that's right. I wish we, you know, we could like travel and stuff. Try it out. Imagine if Corey just like showed up <laughs> right. to those auditions, like put in a different name and then right. walked in and was like, or maybe he like walked in wearing a mask so they couldn't tell who it was. Right. And then just God, saying. That would be good. Like a hidden camera bit or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Exactly. Or, you know, and that's the thing, like, and I know, I know that uh, Slipknot and has done a lot of um, in the past, like charitable stuff. It's just hard right now that people can't do stuff, but it would be cool to even see like Corey Jam with like that older fella. Um, do you yeah. think the Cherry Bombs will be touring uh, next year? Do you think there's a chance maybe with the vaccine coming out? I don't know. Um, I don't know if anybody really knows. We're just kind of all playing it by ear. I've been told not to expect for us any touring until fall 2021. So right. Okay. Least, so that's next year. At least. Right. Yeah, so that's next year. So right. You know, and in a weird way, I mean, yes, it sucks, and I think we're all really, really needing live entertainment. We're all needing some sort of something, you know. So we're all hurting, not just people in our industry, but fans are too, you know, I think there's some fans that are really affected by not being able to go to live shows right now. I certainly, so, am. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting really dark right now. And so, right. um, hopefully we can get out there sooner than later. Bands can get out there sooner than later. But one thing that's kind of concerning to me is I, I feel like when the, when the floodgates open and we're all going to hit the road, every artist is going to be out the, on the road at the same time. It's going to look like the Las Vegas strip in every city. Right. You're going to have to pick between, you know, this band and that band, any given or, day. Or they could, I think, I think there's a couple, a few different ways. I, I think that you're going to see like the Danny Wimmer festivals having the craziest freaking lineups. <laughs> One, I think that you're going to yeah. have, um, I mean, if they're able to, maybe not fest would have the the in, the most insane lineup of all time, you know? Um I think that th these traveling festivals have the opportunity if the money I think in the past it didn't make sense to say, okay, let's put 10 bands on a bill. I think at least next year and maybe into 2022, it might make more financial sense for people to pay a higher ticket price if they're willing um, for a larger bill and you get there a little bit earlier versus, you know, for me, I mean, I'm different. I'll go to three shows in a week, but your average person is going to go to one a week. They've got other shit they got to do and right. they're just not going to put up with it. So it's, right. it's interesting to think about. And I'm just hopeful. Like you said, nobody knows the answer to that. So maybe, um, I don't know. I, I just hope I'm going to get the vaccine as soon as I can. Um, Me too. and I, and listen, and here's the thing, if there is a microchip in it, if there's like 5g, that's fine. Cause my cell service is bad anyways. So, you know, <laughs> so you'll be gold firmware. I mean, I have a Tesla, my car gets updated and stuff and they're probably spying on me and all this. I don't give a shit. Follow me around 24 hours a day. I am the, the, you'll, you will wish you didn't. So, um, <laughs> well, yeah, you bring I'm up an so interesting <laughs> point, honestly. I mean, what if, because Remember, there were no real traveling proper weekend long festivals anymore. Like Warp Tour, I think was one of the last of the Mohicans at that right. point. Like it was and and so this may you you touched on something. I think maybe this may be the comeback of them because right. it does make more sense, like what you said, financially, right. schedule wise. I mean, everybody's gonna be available. Right. Um and, and you know, fans aren't gonna have a ton of disposable income to be going to a ton of different shows every single night, nor the time. So, right. hey man, we may see the comeback of the traveling, touring weekend festival. Right. And yeah, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah, like uh, I know that even before this, there were some that were talking about coming back. And obviously, NotFest has evolved into sort of a traveling, they're kind of like a warp Tour type thing too, in a certain way. And so I think that you could have these lineups. See, there, here was another meme. I'm just going to tell another meme you probably right. saw yeah. is that um, somebody posted the lineup of Not Fest with like a data. They were supposed it was going to be Slipknot, a data remember, Code Orange, 
uh, and a couple other bands. And they were like, this is what the pandemic took from us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because it got canceled. So I actually uh, didn't see that one. So yeah, send it no, my it way. Was, right. Yeah, it was a, it was a good one. See, that's the thing though. I'm going to just hit you up in advance and say, have you seen it? I'm not even going to send it. I'm just going to say it. And if you've gotten it for the day, then just say, yeah, F off. I don't want to see it. Um, <laughs> so that's what, that's what most of my friends have started to do. Like, have you seen the one about the blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, yes. And then they're like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just forget I mentioned it then. Just check it. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. I figured you had, you know, I thought you might've. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Probably the same have place. You- everyone else saw it. <laughs> right. Um, so what is, what is, you guys are like out in Nevada. What is it like right now? Are there, is there stuff to do? Are you able to do anything? Like, I mean, there's stuff you can do socially distance. Yeah. You've got the, you've got the, um, escape room that you guys did, but yep. is there other, like are casinos open? Is that something you can even go to? Are you guys casino people like in the Hawaiian shirts, like just spending it all? <laughs> I mean, we we are but we're not we're not casino people in that we go there all the time we avoid right. the strip as much as we can right. however we we do enjoy um you know playing the slots or playing blackjack or whatever if we happen to be in one so right. um, do you guys ever get recognized at these casinos yeah and that's actually been kind of a nice thing about a mask really so we went We went out to dinner for the first time when the pandemic hit in October for our anniversary. And we went down to Nobu, which is in one of the casinos and we were wearing masks and nobody looked twice. It was like, yeah, this is awesome. But at the same time, it felt like we were doing something wrong. Like we were doing something we were supposed (laughs) to do. So it was really bizarre. It was our first, you know, we order our groceries and and things like that. We try not to go as many places as we can, but things like the escape room where they they sanitize the entire room before you come in and you only stick with your group um, and then you go in. And so, I mean, you know, it's just about like making decisions um, that work for you and going about it in a smart way. Right. Um, but Vegas is uh, reducing things down to 25% occupancy everywhere. Sure. Uh, some of my girls are performers on the strip and they're saying that it's really odd because the audience has to be 25 feet away from the stage and then they all have to be socially distanced. And then the performers themselves, they have to wear masks as well when they're performing. Oh, on stage. Yeah, wow. on stage. So um, a lot of the, a lot of my girls, you know, their masks are like the see-through like plastic. So they're like breathing right. really hard while they're performing. That's like fogging up and it's right. It just said it's just, you know, it's just kind of awkward. So um, you can't really connect with the audience very well when they're 25 feet away and they're, you know, all that. I've seen um, some, you know, there's been some some bands that have found some ways to do it, the drive-ins, or there's like these pods where they they square them out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like play, exactly. Like <laughs> play play pins. Um, Kid Rock posted uh, on his Twitter. He posted, I mean, this is the most Kid Rock post ever. He was wearing a mask and, and had a hat on and he was inside of um, Walmart and he was like, this is the first time I've been able to spend three hours browsing Walmart in years. So I guess people don't know there's Kid Rock walking around in Walmart because he has a mask on. So nobody recognizes oh. him. And I would imagine, I would imagine, um, like it would get old after a while if people came up to you in intrusive settings, like eating dinner or something like, Hey man, you know, uh, what's going on? Yeah. Tell, <laughs> tell yeah. me about this. There's definitely, I feel like etiquette when it comes sure. to approaching anybody for that matter. Right. right. Not just like celebrities or anything, not just anybody like, sure. Um, sometimes, you know, when you see like someone, you know, right. And you're in a restaurant, say it's like a friend you come by and you say, Hey, how's it going? And then you keep it moving. And that's somebody, you know, you have a relationship with that's different. Um, it's, it can get a little weird when you're trying to have dinner and you know, you got the kids or family, or you're trying to catch up with somebody you haven't seen in a long time or something like that, you know? And somebody comes and and saying hi is always cool, but it's like saying hi and like not leaving. <laughs> right. So you you know you're trying to like be nice and and cordial and you're like okay thank you and then then you're like okay thank you. Yeah, you yeah. you guys know more about um and I don't know how much I know you've done stuff you've talked about this a little bit so 
if this is not something you yeah. want to talk about, just no, go for it. But, but yeah. you guys, you and Corey have dealt with a lot of weird, like it, people trying to intrude into your lives. Um, dare I say, like, I'm not saying stalker, but like, you know, like you've <laughs> yes. dealt with stuff with stuff with people who are out there in the stratosphere that might seem a little over the line, you know, uh, yeah. maybe way over the line. Uh, <laughs> I'm not yeah. speaking in definitive terms here, but, um, you guys have dealt with, with, with stuff that's upset you guys, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and too, I think it's when you dehumanize somebody in the public light is when you start getting really inappropriate, you know? So, right. um, like we've had things, you know, sent to our house, um, and things like while it means while they mean well and we understand that absolutely right. there's kind of an uneasiness you know imagine how you would feel if someone you had no idea who they were you've never met them you will probably never meet them you know just started knocking on your door one day or just started sending you things or leaving you things on your porch Ooh. you know and oh, like, it, no. it just it, it feels a little intrusive it feels um mm. It, it is a little scary sometimes. Um, and then, you know, we're, we like to keep, you know, our home like very private. So, um, so yeah. And we've had situations where people have definitely, uh, gone above and beyond in, in integrating their, themselves into our lives or finding things out about us or going to extra lengths to, um, you know, getting involved with us in one way or another. And it's, I, it's, it's weird because on one hand you say it comes with it. You should know better. Right. Right. But on the other hand, it's like, well, is that, is that an excuse? Like, are we right. really just letting that be the thing? And then that's it. Like, does that mean it's allowed? Right. So, um, yeah. Nobody I mean, should be just, treated poorly, no matter how great other aspects of your life are. That doesn't mean there's this weird thing out there where it says, you know, well, it comes with the territory. So you got to put up with people encroaching upon you because you did this other good thing. It's like no good right. deed goes unpunished. It's right. weird. Yeah. Or like you, you knew this or you're in the public light. So therefore, you know, you should be used to this by now or whatever, whatever shitty excuse that people come up with to validate their shitty treatment of you. Right. And when at the, when at the end of the day, it's really just about human and human. Like we are just a human living our lives. You're just a human living your life. And I think lines can get really blurred when people start feeling <clears throat> entitlement or ownership over you um, because either they're a fan or because of you're this public figure or whatever, you know, you see it all the time. Like uh, where people tell artists like you can't give your opinion on this or you can't do that or <laughs> right. you should stick to the music or you know that's right. basically saying is like shut up and play right um so yeah it's just it's um it's a different it's a different world definitely um but you know for the most part most people are really cool and and right. they really mean well and that's always welcomed and you know i i always love the my favorites are the people that come up and you can tell they're so genuine and they're just like, right. you know, Corey, like you, you mean so much and thank you. And then they're very short and sweet and they're just appreciative and they keep it moving. Well, and, and see, that's the thing is that I've seen uh, for anybody out there who's looking at how to approach your favorite musician. I just want to be clear. The context of what we're talking about is we're talking about people who are like crazy. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. What are oh, you yeah. doing? Like, I'm telling you, not talking about if you see somebody at a daggone show or anything like that, or, no. or even in public, if you just happen to run into him, like you said, keeping it short and sweet, keeping it moving on a much Thank smaller you. scale. I've had that, you know, and I love it. But I just wanted to say as a credit to you, because I've seen you do this uh, when we were at a show, um, you, people left and right were coming up to you and you always took the time. Um, and as did Corey always took the time to converse with them. And it was like, you were trying to get somewhere. Like you had somewhere you had to get to first. I don't remember what it was, but right. you, oh, they'd be like, okay, we got to go to this thing, but you had to walk through to get there. And then people were stopping you left and right. Like, oh my God, I love this. And I love that. And they were all so great. And you took the time every time. And like, 
not any, you know, you weren't trying to show off or anything. It was just who you were as a person. Um, so I think that I think that that's great and that's a good example. Most bands that I've been around and most performers and things that I've been around are that way. But then there are yeah. some who are not that way. <laughs> I'll say right. that. Right. Yeah. Right. And and I kind of have I, I kind of understand why some could get a little short tempered or you know, we like we know the ones that are notorious for that kind of right, behavior, right, right. And so you know maybe they're old curmudgeons or maybe they're just over it or you know maybe they're just very like this is my life this is my boundary and I'm not going to allow you in it because I'm here doing this thing living my life and I don't want you in it so right okay that's fair you're entitled to your own time and space I get it and um but I do I do appreciate people who come up and say you know just wanted to say hi and I appreciate you and thank you so much and I love watching girl gang or you've inspired me to start dancing again. And, and those are, th- are definitely welcome things. And I appreciate that very much. And, and if I have to go somewhere for like, you know, you and I are walking somewhere, I'd be like, okay, thank you so much. I'm really sorry. I got to get going. And, right. and it's as simple as that, but you don't have to be a dick, you know, nobody's right. got to have to be like, eh. but I will say there was one time, God, where were we? Some show, I think it was an acoustic show and Corey, there's like certain songs that Corey likes to sing like to me, you know, like he just likes to like look at me and like really sing it. It's super sweet. Right. And I always appreciate that. And I always, you know, we have little hard eyes. It's stupid. Right. And there was this one fan that just like had to like share some crazy story about Corey with me. And she was like screaming in my ear and she could get right to my face. And I'm like, look, dude, my man's like trying to like, he's singing right. something. I, and I just went, Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Percy was just like, you bet. You know, right. whatever. But yeah, so it was a time and place. There's time and place for everything. And right. But the Absolutely. people who are like crazy, like the ones that like we're really talking about here, like the crazy, like you know, like the right. crazies. Like oh, right? I know. So yeah. I mean, there's a definitely a line that when you start crossing it, it gets dangerous. Right. So um, and it gets threatening and right. that's when we have to start protecting ourselves and, and, and taking steps to make sure it doesn't go any further, you know? Right. It's just so, not, you know, it, it's, there's been time and time again where there have been people who are like overzealous fans and Slipknot unfortunately has that element to their fan base because of how interesting they are, um, you know, there's just been tragedies in the past. I just don't even want to mention it, but you know, tragedies in the past that we've all seen where these certain bands just invite sometimes fringe elements that are, you know, you just have to be safe, which by the way, Slipknot has top notch security anyways, thank God. Um, but yeah. uh, I've yeah. never felt like any venue that you go to, the venues they play, it's the top of the line venues. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's really the smaller venues that people play that it's just always a, a concern of mine. Um, you know, concert security is something that I'm very passionate about because I've, we've seen this happen too many times. Um, you know, you go to the Ariana Grande concert, things like that. And it's, it's something that bothers me. And I also say, you know, just off of that part of it, but then on the other part, the entitlement part of it, there's this really weird element. And this is 90% of any person's fan bases usually are really good people. There's this yeah. like 10% of Slipknot fans maybe or maybe 5%. It's a small, it's a very small percentage of them who are rooting for Corey to be miserable. They want, you, dude, you can't write heavy shit unless you're mad. You know, they think that, they think that when you write a song, here's what they think happens. They think you go to the grocery store. They think a guy gets out and dings your car and then another car runs into your car and you're pissed and then you pull out a pen and paper and you start going i'm gonna slit your throat and fuck the moon like that's not how it works that's not how it works it's the dumbest thing in the world so i i feel like is that something you've noticed that people seem to think that like he's she's not supposed to be happy the slipknot songs won't be good absolutely i mean i can't tell you how many times people would be like oh Corey's in love. There goes everything. Everything's going to suck now. (laughs) And, you know, you're going to ruin Slipknot or blah, 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 because you're making him happy. It's like, you know what? Like, 
There it's like are, a compliment in a way, though, too. It's like you're making them like, happy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, and the, again, that's that dehumanizing of. Right. So when where you feel like, you know, th- you feel like they're making music for you. Right. For you. This is for you. And right. that's not the case. I mean, when you, and Korea said it many times in interviews, and that's the only reason why I'm saying it is because. You know, you have to make music for yourself first. Correct. Like that's who it's for. And and you share it with the world. And if people connect to it or, or find something in it that, that resonates with them, then that's great. But um, but it started, yeah, you're right. When when fans start feeling like this is for me, though, this is for my pleasure and my enjoyment. And if you're happy, then that part of me is going to be taken away. Right. And or I'm not going to get that anymore. Um, and that's what I want because it's good and I like it. So right. in, a, in a way, you're kind of treating him like a product. Um, right. Yeah. And um, it's sad to see. But luckily, you know, Corey's just going to keep doing what Corey wants all the time. He doesn't care. Exactly. So, um, that's the way. So yeah. It. Yeah. And, and I put um, I had also sorry to interrupt. I, yeah. I had. On my, um, I did my year in list, and of course, uh, Corey's record was on it. And mm-hmm. one of the things I noted in it, in like my explanation, I said something to the effect of like, uh, I don't even remember what I wrote because I'm so stupid. Um, I think I wrote this yesterday. <laughs> I put it on, I put it on my year in list, and I said, you know, m- it's mind blowing to me that Corey spent six months telling people that this wasn't going to be like Slipknot. And then when it came out, there was a small percentage of people who were still disappointed. Like, what sense does it make to release a solo project where it's like, I'm going to do all the shit I've always wanted to do that I can't do in Slipknot. Like, that's what that was. That's what that is. And he's all over the place on that record. There's freaking like Americana ballads. There's hip hop songs. It's like, and for someone to get mad at that. You know, it's experimentation is what it is. And experimentation is the most important ingredient for creativity, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Um, I just thought that there's just a lot of stuff sometimes out there where people can get mean if you take it too serious. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think it, I, I don't know. I just, I hope he's able to tour that record is really what I'm saying at some point if he has yeah. some time. I hope so too. Um, but yeah, that was really bizarre to see, but I mean, a lot of people aren't that smart either. So, you know, you can tell them all day how it's going to go, what it's going to be and, and whatever, but they're not going to listen. They're not going to get it. And then you're going to put it out and then they're going to be mad. So, and and here's the other thing. It's like ACDC, right? Like AC, we know what ACDC sounds like. We know what ACDC is going to sound like. They are true to their sound and it, yeah. it's not going to change. Not, ACDC is not going to come out with like an experimental. <laughs> an EDM record. <laughs> like, yeah, like a dubstep thing. <laughs> They're just not going to do it, right? We know this and we love them for that. But at the same right. time, you hear half the people going, oh, it's the same shit. I've heard this before. So they're either going to love it because it is what they know and love and it is right. what they expected. Or they're going to hate it because it's the same shit. So you can't win. So you right. might as well just do what you want. <laughs> right. And even and, still, people act as though like, you know, okay, I I, I don't know Corey's inner feelings, but I, he seems like he's very happy in his life right now, which I'm so happy for. And so during yeah. this time where he's very happy in his life, he releases an outstanding Slipknot album, which as I understand it, is their most successful Slipknot record to date, at least in terms of release. So right. what is there to be? The, the theory the is not even true. Right. There's is, data. Right, exactly. Because that just proves that. And, and again, it's the same thing. You're dehumanizing him, right? So right. he is a person who is multifaceted. He can experience pain and go to a place of pain and bring that back out because he has you know many layers to him as you right. do as right. i do as everybody watching this does and it's i don't have many layers it's like beer you burrito a and sash. no <laughs> not a chance yeah stop <laughs> you'd be bet you'd be nicer to yourself dude you are fantastic you are great you are driven you are fantastic at what you do and Thank you're a guy you. that when you put your mind to something, you do it, man. That's kick ass. <laughs> yeah, people you. probably said, I want to start a YouTube channel, but haven't done it or couldn't even get it off the ground. Right. You've got oh, three? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a third. Yeah. And I have other, I have like other consulting stuff I do as well. But, um, oh, but enough about like, me. Thank you. Like though. you got more hours 
in the day. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're a little mover and shaker, man. Right. For real. So um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It was their most successful album. Uh, they kicked ass with it. And that was during a time when he was happy and with me, he just went to a place that he needed to go and, and brought that out. And he has, you know, a lot of history of, of painful things as, as we all do. And sure. You know, he just has a gift in being able to communicate that in his lyrics. Right. So uh, I want to ask you too about this because we talked about this a little bit before the call and I find this yeah. very interesting. So for those of you, I've talked about this a lot. For those of you who have watched Girl Gang, um, there was even a little sound bite of me in there, which I was freaking stoked about. Yeah. I thought that was so sick. Yeah. Um, so Girl Gang season two, you can watch it. It's on YouTube. Um, I've linked to that in the description. So a lot of people who have watched this series are wondering about the chance of there being a Girl Gang three. It's yes. really insightful. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I want you to go watch it. Here's why. Girl Gang is cool because it's behind the scenes. If you guys are, if you guys remember this, at Knotfest there was a damn riot at Knotfest, and it was very scary. We can laugh about it now because everything turned yeah. out okay, but it was terrifying. Talking about concert security, Slipknot had to cancel. Uh, Evanescence had like their gear destroyed. This Girl Gang season two has all of the behind the scenes footage and the the what they went through at that time and it's professionally shot it's literally a documentary so go over there and su uh, subscribe to the cherry bombs channel as well so is there going to be a, a a season three yeah uh there actually is so we decided season three was going to be all the behind the scenes of making of macabre right um so we'll we'll have the showing of macabre on january 1st 2nd and 3rd at 12 and 6 pst and, and um, after that, we will go ahead and show Girl Gang 3 on YouTube, as we do, probably a month after that. Just give me time to, to get it all in order and, and fleshed out with Nathan over at Kind Punk. And then uh, after Girl Gang 3, we, we might do another showing of Macabre again thereafter. So uh, we've got things in the works. Uh, we got, you know, a nice three, four months planned ahead. Um, but Girl Gang 3 is, is just showing all the shooting, all the prep work. Um, you know, all the running around. We And we did some other projects too on the side as well. You know, we shot a music video. Uh, we of course did the forum show. Um, and so you'll be able to see some behind the scenes of all those things as well. Um, so That's it's really fantastic. just getting the new, yeah. And, I, and now I have all Las Vegas based performers. So it's really about bringing that new team together and shaping right. them and then getting them up and up on, on all this new stuff with the show. And so there's gonna be a lot of new faces um, and some, some old faces too. And, right. um, and yeah, so it's just all macabre based for the most part. That's so awesome. So, um, last question before we get out of here, because we've been talking yeah. at about an hour now. So, um, everybody's sitting at home, everybody's chilling at home. What are the movies and shows and documentaries you guys have been watching? Man, I haven't had time. I've been so <laughs> busy. That's a great answer. It's so true, man, because yeah. we've been filming this stuff constantly and my ass is kicked. And if I'm not <laughs> filming it, I'm rehearsing for it. And and I've just been so, so like MIA on everything. I feel like I ha I've missed so much. Like I know Mandalorian season two has been going on and everybody's losing their mind. So I, I don't want to hear any spoilers. I want to go. I want to watch that. Now that Macabre is done, now I can go because I got an Xbox now. So I'm going to start playing, you know, a Call of Duty. Dude, you've got Creed. an Xbox? Yeah. Well, I asked Corey if I could open it now. <laughs> you got the Series X? No, I, I do, he got it. So I don't okay. think he understands the difference between the Right. So I don't oh, know. You got to send me your gamer tag when you have it. If you're playing Call okay. of Duty, I play it every night. Yeah. We'll play COD. Okay. Uh, okay. I've got a I'll whole squad you. of people. I won't tell anyone your gamer tag. Um, <laughs> that will be sick. Yeah. Um, no, I love it. I used to, you know, I used to be in a clan when I was in No, college. I didn't know that. Yeah. You were I in like a competitive esports group? Um, yeah, we were on um, game game battles. Remember the, the leaderboards, the game battles? So you're good. So you're, so you're pretty good at it then. Uh, I once was many, many I am, years ago. Yeah, it's, like, you gotta like, it's like a motor skill. 2004, you gotta, you'll, it'll, 2005. It'll come so Rainbow right back Six to Las you. Vegas was my jam. What? And then Call of Duty, of course. Um, 
So, so have you started a Twitch yet or what? Because like <laughs> what happens is there's a lot of people who start Twitches, but they're not good um, there. And so, you know, you should get into that too. Um, and, I would love um, to. I, if Again, now that things are kind of chilling out a little right. bit now, now um, I'm, people have asked about Twitch. Um, I still don't, I still need to jump in there and see what it is. Right. Um, so yeah, I know a lot of people who do Twitch and like, I mean, I know you guys know Ronnie Radke, that dude is like one of the top 10 people on Twitch right now. I I would imagine he is making God tier money on Twitch right now. So more power to him, man. So, so (laughs) fill me in real quick. If you have a Twitch and people are watching it, does everybody have to pay to watch you? No. 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 So okay. here's, here's how cool. it works. And forgive me, everyone in the audience who knows how Twitch works, because okay. I don't know be like, oh. that much about it. They're going to be such a dumbass because I, I know I can tell you everything there is to know about YouTube and how it works and all that. Right. I know like 20 percent about Twitch, but I know enough. So the way it works is you can subscribe to the person on Twitch. And when you do, if you're a if you're like one of the bigger fans, you get access to like a bunch of features. It's kind of like Patreon, but it's a little bit better maybe. So oh, if you cool. pay like, if, if so for instance, if you're an Amazon Prime member, okay, already, and pretty much everyone is, they Amazon will give $5 to one person every month on from your Amazon Prime into their account if you can get them to subscribe. And a ton cool. of people pay because it gives them advanced access. They get special chat emojis and all this stuff. And Also, once you get enough subscribers and enough view time, then you become an Amazon partner. So then, Ah, and this is where it's like YouTube, everyone can tune in. So what happens is, is once you're partnered, they put ads on your videos and it's like a really high payout. So that's pretty Uh much how it works. And it's a great, I mean, if you're going to play video games and you play in a couple hours a day, you can get paid for it. So, uh, <laughs> that's the dream, right? Right. That's the dream. Oh right. <laughs> 19 year old me is freaking out right now. Right. Right. So there's a lot of folks out there like Ronnie is crushing it on Twitch right now. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I would, he's got falling in reverse has never been bigger. And then you've right. got him on Twitch. He's never been bigger. And then Paige right. is on Twitch too. And it's just like this. He lives on the side of a mountain in like a, uh, on the waterfront in like a castle now. Ah, so cool. I'm sure he's, That's uh, cool. <laughs> she's doing pretty well for himself. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> he's like yeah. driving a Rolls like, Royce and shit. That's right. I saw with like the, the man. Right. He's killing it. More power to him. Killing it. Good for him, man. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Nothing but love really on that. A very nice guy. He's super right. sweet. Always when my when my cool. dad passed, I mean, just like just like you guys did as well. But when my dad passed, he sent me a really nice, heartfelt message. It meant a lot to me. Um, you know, there was just so many really nice people, and that's the thing that I learned. One of the things that I learned through this process is how many people actually give a shit about like like people that. And I don't mean like give a shit about me, but there is a ton of people out there in the world who, if they see someone that they maybe talk to occasionally or anything going through a hard time. There's a lot of empathy still out there in the world. And that's a yeah. beautiful, beautiful thing. And I just experienced that firsthand. My house was, f- man, we had so many flowers up in this place. It was just Aww, just piles man. and piles and piles of them. So um, there's just okay. a lot of great people out there. So I'm, I'm, that's great I'm to hear. thankful that's, for that. Yeah. But I want to wrap this up because I'm sure you've got stuff to do that's like true crime to watch and you need to rest after all this filming. She literally filmed a daggone movie. So this is a full-fledged production. It's crazy. There's stunts. You risked your life for this. So the least you guys can do, she put her life on the line. The least you can do is go in the description, visit the link, sign up. Uh, and you can um, watch it on January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. There will be showings on those days at noon and 6 Pacific Standard Time, um, and all that info will be on the site. You can also go watch Girl Gang Season 2 and look forward to Girl Gang Season 3. And you want to know how you'll know when Season 3 comes out? Well, what you do is, is you go over to the Cherry Bombs YouTube channel, and you smash that subscribe button, and you tell them we sent you, and uh, and you just do it that way. So I'm looking forward to seeing all this stuff. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. I and I hope that Santa brings Corey all the batteries he needs. <laughs> <For that> battery, <laughs> oh my God! I, I'll record. 
record his face when he opens it. So okay, please. What, what the reaction is going to be? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I live for it. It's great. Thank right. you for having me. Yep. I really, really appreciate it. And Merry Christmas to you and your family yes. as well. Yes. Tell your lady we said hello. Right. And um, yeah, just keep in touch with us, man. Let us know how you're doing. Okay. Well, will do. Absolutely. Great Thank seeing you. You, you too. Right. Maybe, just maybe, you might enjoy one of these clips. Join me on Instagram and Spotify for news you may not find here. And if you really want to do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to support. <laughs>